Um, as Pastor Abe mentioned, if we've never met, my name is Abraham, and I get the honor and privilege of serving this amazing community as one of the pastors here at Local. And today, as he mentioned, you know, I'm just excited because I get to host this panel of amazing individuals. And, uh, but before we get in, I, I want to just kind of add to what Pastor uh, was saying right now. And, you know, uh, for the month of February, the, the focus of our series has been Fresh Faces and new voices. And so it was a no-brainer to put this panel together. Um, you see, here at Local, we're excited about our youth. We're excited about our young adults. That's why this year, that's right, that's right, let's give it up. That's why this year we launched our Sunday youth services, you guys. We launched our, our youth nights. Come on, let's give it up for youth night. But you see, it's one thing to have a seat at the table. It's another to have a voice at the table. And so today, guess what? We're listening. And we want to hear from them, you guys, because they are the future, and we want to invest in future leaders, you guys. So uh, without further ado, why don't you guys do me a favor? Let's give a big, warm welcome to Lee, Chloe, Angela, and Sammy as they make their way to the stage. All right, all right, all right. How are you guys doing? All right, so there we go, there we go. Thank you, thank you. Let's get situated. Let's give it up one more time, you guys. There. Woo! All right, I got my son's iPad, so you guys gonna bear with me here? He has like this snake. Uh, let's see, what's his code? One, two, three, four. Hold on. All right, all right. Don't tell him I know. All right, you guys. So, like any panel, right? I mean, uh, I'm not gonna assume that you guys know these individuals. So, what I like to do is I always like to send them questions and say, hey, Tell me a little bit about yourself, right? So they uh, sent me some answers. So we have some fun facts about them, uh, some weird facts. And um, I'm going to just introduce them to you, you guys. All right, so let's just play along. Let's, you know, um, interact with us. This is going to be interaction today, you guys. So let's, let's, uh, let's bring the vibes and the energy. All right, so on my right, I have Sammy. Let's give it up for Sammy. All right, so hey, fun fact about Sammy. He is terrified of birds. <laughs> So am I, so am I. Um, I don't like birds either. I was attacked once. Um, his favorite cartoon is Hey Arnold, you guys? Any Hey Arnold fans in here? Helga Pataki? Yeah, no? Is that one of them? All right. And, and I asked him a question. I said, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? And this is what he said. I'm going to read it verbatim. He said, teleportation. Because anywhere, I can go anywhere I want and never be late. And in quotations he put, hopefully, bro, if you're late and you can teleport, something's wrong. So, <laughs> um, and, and then to, to his right, we have Angela. Let's give it up for Angela, you guys. This one's really cool. Fun fact about Angela, you guys, she can speak fluent in Russian. Like that is wild. Here, can you say something? I'll oh, just kidding, I'll just kidding. Um, her favorite cartoon is Barney. Who remembers Barney? I love you. Right, no? Anyways, all right. Uh, if she could have one superpower, what would it be? And she said, flying because flights are expensive. Hey, amen. Like, I want to go to Iceland, and I, I hear you. I wish I could fly, too. All right. And then to her right, we have Chloe. Let's give it up for Chloe. Fun fact about Chloe, you guys. Um, she was homeschooled uh, through <laughs> Woo! That's right. We got a fan over here. Uh, she was homeschooled through middle school and high school. You like your teachers, I, yes. I assume, Shout right? Yeah, yeah. Shout out mother. to you. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Favorite cartoon. She grew up liking all the Charlie Browns. Let's go. Charlie Brown. Okay. I like that. Um, superpower. Definitely. This is what she said. Definitely the ability to teleport so I can save money on gas. Okay. Like, I, I see a theme here. Flying, teleporting, transportation. It's expensive. And then last but not least, I got my boy Lee at the end. Let's give it up for Lee. All right, this one's, this is a weird fact about Lee, you guys. So, and I looked this up, bro, we got to talk after. But anyways, his weird fact, and I'm going to read this verbatim, because he put, my guilty pleasure is watching TikToks of people picking dandruff out of their hair. Um, okay, is this kind of like ASMR? Like, anybody put, like, glue on your hand in school, right? And you kind of peep, is it along, the, yeah. no? Yeah, yeah, right? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> his favorite cartoon uh, or television show was Power Rangers. What's up? One question. What color? Ranger. The blue, always. Blue. Oh, wow. I was, blue Ranger, always. I'm a white ranger. 
Like, it was black when it launched, you guys. I was 10 when it aired. Uh, August 28, 1993. Do the math. Um, but then once, you know, Tommy came out, I was like, yo, what's up? Like, Green Ranger, White Ranger, let's go. All right. <laughs> and his power, if he could have any power, what would it be? His superpower. He said telekinesis. Uh, because it would be fire to be able to move things with my mind. This is like Jedi stuff, you guys. Like, just moving things with your mind. Um, but anyways, you guys, all right. I got an icebreaker question for each one of you, so we'll start um, down over here with Lee. Lee, if you could pick one emoji that best describes you, what would it be and why? No fruits or vegetables, please. One emoji. Like oh, crickets, come on. Crickets? Um, I don't know. <laughs> the cricket, literally me. The, the cricket. cricket, okay. No, I think I would choose... I use the dead emoji a lot. Like okay, the, there you go. Little, little, little skeleton? Yeah. The skull, yeah, the skull. The skull, the skull. Yeah, there the skull. you go. Okay. That's a good one. Um, hmm. I'd say the monkey covering the eyes, because yes. I'm shy. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Shouldn't be up here, but I'm shy. I like it, I like it. That's good. Um... Probably the laughing face, honestly. I yeah. feel like I use yeah. it way too yeah, yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> LOL. Cool. And then I think I would say the smiling emoji because I feel like I'm always smiling. You are. You are, bro. Yourself. He's got a nice smile. Let's <laughs> give it over Sammy. Look at you. In case anybody's wondering, mine would be the sweating emoji, like all nervous because that's just me. Always anxiety, <laughs> overthinking. All right, you guys. So our first topic today, right? We're going to get into a few topics. We're going to touch on technology. We're going to touch on culture and faith, all in the context of the church. Uh, but from their perspective, because I want to hear from them, you guys. Um, and so my first question will start, yes, with Leap. Um, Technology is ever evolving, as we know, right? Um, we got platforms like TikTok, Instagram, AI, ChatGPT. Anybody use ChatGPT? How do you think Pastor Mario wrote his sermon? Um, <laughs> totally kidding, totally kidding. Um, but it, it, it can sometimes be really, really hard to keep up with this evolving technology, right? And so there's always a new app, there's always a new platform that's coming up, coming out, and you're just like, yo, are you on laps yet, right? Um, but historically speaking, you guys, historically speaking, the church has always been really slow to adapt and to adopt new methods of reaching the lost in the community, right? Um, so my first question to you, Lee, is how can the church harness technology to spread the gospel and reach the community? Okay, so... I have notes, guys, okay? So I'm going to look at my phone. I'm sorry. But um, for myself, at least, I started on YouTube like 12 years ago, right? And I've been able to build a platform. Um, but like the last three years, I haven't done anything with it. I mean, who I am now and who I was posting on social media was very different, right? But when I tell you, I was able to reach an audience and the influence that I had on so many different people is to the point where, you know, brands would reach out and they know you have influence because they'll be like, hey, promote this on your YouTube channel. We'll give you 500 bucks. Promote it on your channel. You'll get, um, what's the word? When somebody like buys something? Um, commission. There it is. Yeah. You'll get commission on top of what we're giving you, right? Um, and so when, that, when I got this question, because I, I, I want to continue on my channel, right? But um, I want to rebrand my channel because of where I'm at in my life now, let's go, let's right? Go. And so I know that with the platform that I have, being YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is, whatever we have here at Local, yeah, yeah. we can reach such a larger audience. Um, digital right. evangelism is a thing. That's yeah, a thing. Yeah, it is. And I think that it's about how we use it. Because we can go on there and be like, oh, yeah, God is good, but like, how many people are going to feel that, right? Like, yeah. we, we have to get into it. So I think that it starts with those of us that are, I guess, more in tune with it, yeah. with the social media aspect. Because not everyone is, social media is not for everybody. And that's yeah. just that, yeah, yeah. you know? But it does start with, with, with us. So it like does. the it, YouTube, the TikTok, Instagram, all I love that. that. I love that. Sh uh, what's your channel so we can follow? I'm just no, 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 I'm good. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. Don't you guys, <laughs> um, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Uh, no, no, but I love what he said because if we use it, if we can leverage technology, right, and use it responsibly, Right, then we can have a true impact. Now, um, in my days, I remember when I was growing up, right, like our generation, the millennials, uh, the church was really slow to adopt Instagram. Yeah. It was really, really slow. And then you go like five, almost 10 years in, now every single church is on Instagram. And I feel like right now TikTok is the thing, right? Like, um, we're on TikTok. So like, I think we're ahead of the game. We're ahead of the curve, yeah. right? So come on, shout out. Um, next question is for Angela. Angela, um, 
Do you think having a digital connection with someone can have a positive impact just as much as an in-person connection? Why or why not? Um, that's a good question. I feel like in person, I lean more towards that because like, like I have long distance friends and even in my relationship with my husband, we had to do long distance and um, I feel like whenever you plan a trip, it's like you're so excited, like, oh, I get to spend time with them, like, can't wait to get coffee, get food, go travel, so, like, you're genuinely looking forward to that, like, um, just looking at someone in the eyes, it's like, you really can't compare that. Um, I mean, like, FaceTime is, like, the closest thing, but it really doesn't come close to it, so I feel like that's my answer. That's good, yeah. And nothing beats, like, in-person connection, right? But, um, Studies have shown that, that we prefer in-person connections. However, we always default to our devices, you guys. So I think that's, that's, that's really good. I love your answer. Um, I love how, yes, we need to make uh, an impact with each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Oh, one more thing. Yes, also, please. like, you never know who's distracted. Like, you never know what someone's actually doing behind the screen. Like, oh, you could be good. driving. Yeah, that's <laughs> You me could all the time. be, like, cooking. Like, you really never know what someone's doing. So, when you can, like, sit and, like, look and know that the person, like, read their body language and know that they're not distracted, Ooh, that really helps. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Eye contact, body mm -hmm. language, right? All that matters, you guys. Um, all right, all right. Next question. This one is for Chloe. Hey, so how can we reimagine community, right? We're big on community here at Local, you guys, if you haven't noticed already. Yeah. Um, but how can we reimagine community in the digital age? Ooh, great question. That's actually what I was thinking of because the first thought that came to my mind was local. Yeah. And I'm kind of on the receiving end of what Lee was talking about, just spreading that evangelism online through yeah. social media because I found local through TikTok. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Who else here found like, local through TikTok, <laughs> yeah. right? It, yeah. No. And that's just been such an amazing testimony for me because if it weren't for social media and for this social media team, I probably wouldn't have been here. So yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah, I that's think. good. And it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's anytime I connect with someone on Sundays, I'm always asking them, right, if they're a first time guest, hey, how did you hear about us? And the one thing that always comes up is like, oh, I saw a TikTok or I saw an Instagram. Uh -huh. And what I love, though, is they say that when they get here, what they saw online, you know, um, it's exactly what they uh, experience here in person. Yeah, I think that's really that's important because sometimes, like, anybody ever, like, look at a restaurant online and you're like, oh, this looks fire, it's dope, like, I'm going to go. You get there and you're like, yo, this is, this is whack. Like, it's nothing like their online, you know, page. And, but I love yeah. that. That's really, really good, you guys. Can, let's give it up for, um, for Chloe. All right, we're going to talk about culture now. All right. So, you guys, in today's culture, we find ourselves inundated with countless things, something it's fighting for our attention. It's either gonna be your social media, your, uh, your email, for those that are in email like myself, you know, texting, you name it, right? So it's by no coincidence that we can sometimes find ourselves in this place where we're comparing our lives to those that are on the other side of the screen, whether it's a celebrity or, or an influencer, right? Um, and I think one of those, uh, one of the downfalls, one of the pitfalls of comparing ourselves is something that we talk about is like imposter syndrome, right? Um, and it can apply like this unnecessary pressure on our lives. So this actual next question, you guys, is for my boy Sammy here. Uh, and for those of you that do not know Sammy, he's a pastor's kid. So this question I <laughs> wrote for him specifically. Um, but Sammy, yeah. what cultural pressures did you encounter for being a pastor's kid? We call them PKs. Um, and how did you overcome them? What word of encouragement would you give to someone who is either a pastor's kid or maybe someone whose parents serve in the church, right? Um, and they come to church because their parents are there. And so there's this pressure, right? So like what word of encouragement uh, would you give them? And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, good, good question. Um, definitely there's that pressure of being perfect. Mm -hmm. um, definitely there's a lot of eyes on me and where I need to be and what I'm doing. And um, you know, people knew my parents already, so they automatically knew me and they had these like high expectations of me already. You know, so I think constantly I had to remind myself that I'm not perfect. I'm human. I'm yeah. gonna mess up, yeah. and I can't compare myself to other other pastor kids or how yeah. they're doing. I gotta focus on myself, focus on my word, and make sure that I'm rooted in what God is telling me. So, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's really good. Let's give it up for Sammy. Yeah, it's like you know, my boys always tell me, "Sorry, like you have no choice. Like you're a pastor's kid now. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like I always wanted to be a pastor's kid, but." Uh, <laughs> Anyways, um, that was good. That was good. Love that. Love that. Um, next question is for Chloe. Chloe, Thank you. 
what are some ways the church can stay relevant in today's culture and connect with the younger generation? Because mm. I think, and I, and I just want to add to that, because, again, um, there's this lack of discipleship, right, that, that's happening right now in the church. And I think we would be, um, uh, what's the word, uh, silly to think that just because we're not discipling this next generation, they're not being discipled. See, they're being discipled by someone else, and it's a culture. So as we step into, like, we're in the context of the church, like, how can we as a church stay relevant? Because God's word never changes, right? Amen? Like, it is what it is. Um, but how we approach it can change. So I'll repeat the question. Sorry, I kind of added. Um, but what are some ways the church can stay relevant and connect with the younger generation? I think bottom line, the younger generation is really just searching to be seen yes. and to be loved. Yes. And I think now that social media is such a huge thing, it's a huge part of their lives, they could probably go to that to seek that validation. But I think yeah. we as a church need to be those people for them. Yeah. And I think just us being on this panel, starting yeah. this youth, it's been such an amazing way to just incorporate that and to make them feel seen, make them feel loved. Because bottom line, we're called to do that. Yes. Jesus did that first. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I love that. You guys, um, let's give it up for Chloe. Um, there was a study, and I, I'm just going to point out the obvious. All you guys are young. I want to assume you guys are all Gen Z, right? Um, we live in a society and a culture where we put labels on things, right? We put titles. Uh, it's not always a bad thing because titles and labels can sometimes give, bring clarity to some things, right? But when we talk about generations, right, um, you know, we talk about like the silent generation, the boomers, Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, Gen Alpha for the, for the younger uh, kids, but um, your generation specifically, I love what you said because um, Barna, which is it's a nonprofit that does studies and analysis on churches and the culture, you guys, but 48% of Gen Z, they're saying that y your generation is the most disconnected, non religious um, generation out there. However, 51% are really, really interested and curious about Jesus. You see, because it's one thing to. Um, I'm not scared of that statistic. To me, I'm like, that's an opportunity, as you said, to connect with them, right? That's an opportunity to come and disciple them. But what I see and I love about your generation is that you guys are so bold. Every time I see someone come to like a, a youth night or whatever event we're having, you guys have your Bibles. And that just blows my mind because I'm not going to lie, like I don't have a, I mean, I have like six, seven Bibles at home, but I, everything's on my phone, right? Like everyone here usually has like everything on your phone, but I love that because there's a boldness. There's something that your generation's bringing back that, you know, um, when you look at the church, right? When you look at generations, uh, in the 50s, half of all Americans were going to church. Uh, so 50, almost 50 percent it was 49 percent were all in church so like if in the 50s and 60s if you weren't in church something was wrong with you right um, but church started to get to get very stodgy very kind of like boring and stale um, in my generation the, the millennials like we were like hey how can we make this cool and what did we do we were like let's bring in the skinny jeans Let's bring in the Chelsea boots, the leather jackets, right? Because we wanted to make it cool because we were like, hey, we're passionate about this. We got purpose. We, we, we want to change things. But I feel like it got cheesy. Uh, we got a little too cool, right, for ourselves. And, and that's where you started to see this sort of deconstruction, right, where you start hearing a deconstruction of faith. Um, but your generation, I love it because you guys are so bold and you guys just want connection. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Completely. Completely. Awesome. Love it, love it. Let's give it up for Chloe, you guys. Yeah. All right, Angela, question. What would you like us to know about your generation that in your opinion gets overlooked or mislabeled? I really didn't know how to answer this one. Um, I was just thinking about like growing up, like comparing myself to my younger sisters now, like grow you growing up, like I was climbing trees when I was a kid. Like yeah. nowadays my sisters, they're on their phones. Like yeah. just that like, very different like era i guess but like growing up and like you go from playing outside to like printing like google maps like directions yeah, yeah, yeah. to like oh like now we have a computer like less time outside more time inside and then you just like disconnect from your friends and now it's like oh like we'll connect online and just like i don't know if like people really realize that like it's just so different now it is it is and i and i say that because i got two kids right uh, they're again um, they were born into technology. You guys, I, I, I look around and I, I would say like at least half of this crowd, you guys got to experience like that curve where we were get, getting into technology, right? Um, Facebook and all that. And it's funny how the, our generations kind of dominate certain platforms. 
Um, not to call anybody out, right? But if you're like a boomer and like Gen X, you're probably like on Facebook, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, you guys. I think at some point, like I was on MySpace. Anybody was on MySpace back? No? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, you guys just aged yourself. Um, but and then and then after MySpace, right? It was like Facebook was a cool thing, right? So it was like, oh, Facebook was a little bit more like presentable, more uptight. Like, oh, you could only have 500 friends at one point. That was the cap. Um, but then Instagram, right? So like my generation, we took over Instagram and I feel like your generation is taking over TikTok and I love that. I love TikTok. Pastor Abe loves TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> follow him on TikTok. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Anyways, uh, kind of lost myself here, but I love that. I love what you said, um, that, and there's this sort of this gap, right? Where our, our, this generation, the younger generation is like on their devices. And so there's a lack of like interpersonal responsibility totally. with each other. Um, yeah. That's so, so good, you guys. All right, um, we're gonna step into talking about faith, faith now. And so my first question here is for Lee. Let's go, Lee. So if you guys don't know Lee, um, he's an amazing individual, you guys. You. Uh, when we were talking about youth and all that, we were like, all right, who, who are we gonna like just throw into the fire? I'm just kidding. <laughs> And Lee's just like, hey, here, use me. I love his heart posture, you guys. He is amazing. He's always been like, that's right, let's give it up for Lee. He's always been like, yo, send me, put me in coach. Um, Lee, stepping into your new role and leading the youth, what strategies do you use to promote spiritual growth and development in teenagers? Because I know it's not easy. I was here Friday, and I saw a lot of them, and including my son. He's just like... You know, don't talk to me. I'm here. Be glad. So I know it can be challenging, but what strategies do you promote? Would you promote to, you know, for spiritual growth and development in, in our teenagers? I'm like, <clears throat> for starters, when I read this question, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to like all my secrets. You're just <laughs> you, you said we're not even sending the youth over to their class. So now they're going to know all the secrets. Now, when I when I try to use it on them, they're going to be like, no, no. We're but, all about um, transparency, by the way. Yes, transparency. <laughs> Here at Local, we love transparency. Let's do it. So, for me at least, I think my biggest thing is always being consistent, okay? I think that reaching out, getting to know their names, saying hi to them today and then tomorrow, um, just that, being that same person to them is very right. important. Because throughout the week, like, they're interacting with so many different people. So many different people, their parents, their friends, their teachers. Um, the last thing they need is to come here and then for somebody to be like, oh, like, what's your name again? What, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. just doesn't even make them feel loved, yeah. you know? So my yeah. biggest thing is consistency. And then I give them space. I give yeah. them an opportunity, right? That's good. So us starting youth, I mean, this is for them. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, we're going to put y'all to work. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we have to set up and you guys are here, you know, 15, 20 minutes early, y'all gonna work too. You know what I mean? So like, don't show up early. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't show up early. Um, just kidding. And you know, and for the youth that like to hang out when youth night is over, yeah. y'all are gonna clean up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is for you, you know? So giving them that opportunity to step in. Yeah. And it's not just like a, oh, like, guys, come clean. No, it's a, guys, this is your home. Yeah. This yeah. is for you. And yeah. for the people that, you know, the, the, the kids that you're gonna invite. Like, we want to teach them what our culture is, which is, this is for us. So yeah. we need to take care of what God blessed us with. Man, so man. our leaders hooked us up, but now we have to, like, you know, we got to yes, clean. We gotta yes, yes. We got to do that. So, that's, um, that's so good. And let me, let me just jump in really, really quick. I love what you said about consistency, because in, in, in my experience, stepping into leadership, consistency builds three things. It builds trust, it builds confidence, and it builds loyalty. And when you're consistent in your everyday life, it's, it's, I'm all about personal brand, right? And so are these individuals up here. And that's what I do see in every single one of you guys is the consistency in your life and how you guys have just shown up and just gotten to work, like you said. So yeah. thank you for that. For sure. Go ahead. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, no. Um, let's see. So and then my, my, my final strategy, final strategy is... I'm a very open, loving person, right? Yeah. And that could be taken out of context. I could be your friend really quick. At least that's how you could perceive me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But with the youth, I want to be a mentor before I'm a friend. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to be a mentor because, um, and I like to go back to this, right? So I, I hope we've all seen like the, the movie Mean Girls, right? We all know Regina George. Yes, Regina yes. George, right? Her mom was 
the cool mom. Yeah, you could drink, you could turn up, you could go live your life out there, like go do your thing, you know? Yeah. But, and we, we all know somebody like that. We've, we've either known someone or we know someone like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. okay? And we can all agree that that person has zero respect for their mom or their dad, okay? okay. And so where she failed was that she was a friend before she was a mentor, yeah. before she was yeah. a parent, yeah. you know? And so my biggest thing is I, I'm going to love every single youth that walked through, through the door, every single youth, no matter what baggage they come with, whatever. Like my heart, God has like healed my heart in a way where they could probably like flick me off. And I'm like, bro, I love you. How about that? Yeah, yeah. How about that? Take that. You know what I mean? But I want to be a mentor before I'm a friend because my job here is not to, to be your friend and just turn up, but like to guide you, be, be almost like a spiritual guidance for you yeah. or for them. Not you, but you know them. Yeah, I yeah, still yeah, love you guys, it. but them. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's that's, that's, that's my that's my strategy. And that's good. And I think that's where that that piece, that discipleship, comes in, right? Yeah. It's spending time, and yeah, making sure you remember their names. That's really big. Is uh, when you come to church and it's like the fourth time, and they're like, "Hey, what's your name?" It's like, "Yo, yeah. it's my fourth time here, and you don't remember my name." That's really good. I really like that though. Um, my next question, really quick here, is for Sammy. How do you navigate conflicts between your faith and the values of society? Honestly, I think it's very simple. Um, just sticking to the word, Oof. you know, what okay. the Bible yeah. is, because yes. that's from God, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. I think a, a lot of the times it's very easy in this world with social media, uh, with the constant comparisons, and just everything that's going on in the world. Um, it's very easy to get distracted, yeah. you know. And, yes. and it even says in John 14 and 6, it says that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oof, come you know? on, so come on, yes. Everything that he says, everything that he demonstrates is how we should live our lives. Yeah. So I think it's very important for us to stay rooted in that and make sure that we stay aligned with that as well. Um, not just on Sundays when we're here at church, but every single day, you know, throughout the week. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah that's, that's very, good. very important. That's really good. Let's get it for Sammy, you guys. This guy's just too perfect. I love this kid. Um, I call you guys kids because I'm older, but you all know what I mean. All right, last question. This is for Angela. Angela. How does your faith guide your decision making and actions in your daily life? Um, well, what is faith? Faith is believing without seeing, mm. believing even though like you're going through it and knowing that God is working things out for you. Yes. Um, and like even just testing his promises, there's so many promises in the Bible. Like if you look it up, um, it's so good. But I love this verse and it says, whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord. And that perspective just literally changed it for me. Like, if you're scrubbing toilets for your job, like, you're doing it for God. Like, you're blessing yeah. someone in advance. And, like, yeah. I don't know. Like, how else, how else can you do life and stay joyful if you're not doing it for God? So. Yeah, yeah. That's so good, you guys. And just give it up for Angela. I always say that's, and I love that verse because especially as you start to, you know, in the context of doing church, right, like, as you step into ministry, it's always really important to posture your heart and, and don't look at it like I'm pulling out chairs to pull out chairs for them. You know, no, you're pulling out chairs for a soul that's coming to church, right? You're, you're, you're saying hi to someone that's walking in that might have had like a rough week or rough month, or maybe they're just in a rough season. And if we can just be that, that reflection, you know, and, and embody God's character of love, kindness, and all the fruits of the Spirit, then I think it can impact, you know, these, uh, as people come to the, within the community of the church. I really like that. And I have some closing thoughts. So I'm going to ask a question for every single one of you guys. Um, and so we'll start at the bottom here with Lee. Last question here is, Lee, what encouragement would you give someone who is new to the faith? Okay. <laughs> when, you say, when you say yes for your very first time to Jesus, that's the beginning. It's not easy. It is not easy, okay? Um, People are not gonna like it, and people are not gonna like you <laughs> for saying yes to Jesus. Um, and in the Bible, it literally says, um, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. And for me, it's like, um, I'm still learning. I'm still learning that saying yes to Jesus is not e easy. Obedience is not easy. Um, but it's all worth it. So like, um, Distractions are going to happen yeah. when you say yes. Yeah. 
That ex-boyfriend that treated you like trash and now he wants to come back and say I love you, like that's a, that's a distraction, you know what I mean? Your friends who, who didn't appreciate you before but appreciate you now because you have self-worth, because God is in your heart, because God has shown you love and now you're showing all this love to everybody else because you know who you are and whose you are, that, it, it's, it's hard, but it's so worth it. So my advice for anyone would just be to stand strong, stand confident in what you believe and who you believe in. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, God is love. Yeah, yeah. And our, our, our job is to love God and to love people. Hey. And so yes, don't think that stepping in and saying yes is gonna be, it's gonna be easy, because it's not. Yeah. It's gonna be hard. But as long as you stand firm on your faith, it'll be good. That's good, that's good, that's good. Let's give it up for Lee. Same question. I would just like to say, nothing will bring you more fulfillment in life than having a relationship with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and great. I know that personally through, throughout my whole life, trusting him with everything. When I was scared, I had so many questions. I would just encourage anybody who's new in the faith to not give up, just keep going. God loves it when you ask him questions, and we went over that actually in the youth class this yeah, past Sunday. Good. So I'm, what I'm saying is blessing me back 10 times because yeah. I'm reminding myself these points. And God works everything out for the better. Amen. He really does. Romans 8, 28, so. love it. Let's go, let's give it up. Angela. Um, I would say the church is a place for those who need healing. If you're broken, if you feel weary, if you don't know what's going on in your life, like you're in the right place. Like yes. we're all going through it. Even yes. if people are putting on a different face, like don't look at people because we all need Jesus and his love and his grace. So Yes, that's so good. Yes. All right. Sammy. Yeah, and just um, that nobody's perfect, you know. I, I had to learn that especially because I mean I was I'm a pastor's kid, so I had to really just not compare myself, but you know, we're all struggling with our own things, and I think it's just very important for us to remember that God, or like, whatever we do in our lives will never separate us too far from God. Yeah. He will always be next to yeah. us wherever you go, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, throughout the entire week. So just remember that. Like, no, nobody's perfect. We're all going through our own things, and that God loves you. That's yeah. good. That's good. Let's give it up for Sammy. And then just to close, you guys. You know, we talked about this generation having a boldness of just wanting to bring it back to this just purity of just bring it back to the basics. But regardless of what generation you're from, whether, you know, uh, a boomer, gen X, let, let's just forget about that because, you know what, let us all step in with boldness as we step into our faith. There's a, there's a verse in, um, that Paul, it's, it's, it's in Ephesians 4.1, and Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus, and he says, uh, therefore I, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling, which you have been called. And I love that because you see here Paul is saying, not run, right? We know that life can sometimes catch up to us. You know, he says, walk. And so my encouragement to every single one of you here today is let's walk this out together and let's walk in a manner that's worthy to our God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise and give them another hand. Thank you guys so much for this panel. And uh, I love you guys.